So we are going to have a look at some of the various uh, dynamics questions that we've been assigned through our section. Um, the first one that we'll look at is on page 173, number 14. It says, a swimmer is propelled directly north by a force of 35 newtons. Moving water exerts a second force at 20 newtons to the east. Use a scale diagram to determine the net force acting on the swimmer. So it says use a scale diagram, so we'll just start with creating a scale, um, maybe something like 5 newtons equals 1 centimeter. We have a 35 newton force, which would be 7 centimeters, going directly north. So this would be 35 newtons, and again, we'll make the top of the page north. Moving water exerts a second force that is 20 newtons to the east. So 20 newtons would be 4 centimeters. Head to tail addition. So I'm just going to put a little axis here at the bottom so we can easily measure it. So the resultant vector would be starting at the bottom here. And there's our force and there's our angle. So I start by measuring the force. So the force is equal to 8 centimeters on the scale diagram, which means 8 centimeters times 5 newtons per centimeter equals 40 newtons. Three, only have two significant digits anyway. We then take a protractor. Do we measure it? This angle is 30 degrees by the protractor. So the answer is 40 newtons north, 30 degrees to the east. And that is how we do 14. Um, just remember that when you're doing your vector addition, it is you start with your tail from your, a random spot you can pick and make sure you add your second vector um, head to tail. If you don't do that, then you'll end up with the wrong direction at the end, or potentially even the wrong magnitude. So for number 15, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have to measure these. We have a scale of 1 centimeter equals 50 newtons. Um, and ideally, since you're not writing in your textbook, it's good to make a scale diagram or um, using the PDF of the book, you can print a page off to work on. I have a one centimeter vector for A that's going 60 degrees to the north. And then I have a second vector that's going downwards. So this is really just about your ability to measure. I have this, this is one centimeter, this vector, and I have 0 0.4 centimeters on this vector, which is going straight down. So the whole thing is head to tail addition. So one centimeter up, 0 0.4 centimeters down. The resultant is going to be whatever connects the start to the finish is just that orange line. So for A, remember, tail to head, tail to head. I have a direction that is basically just east, which is probably the easiest to write. And then I'm just going to measure it, which is 
about 0 0.9 centimeters is the best precision I can get. So 0 0.9 centimeters times 50 newtons per centimeter. is equal to 45 newtons in the direction of east. So uh, question B, we basically do the same thing. We measure each vector. So I get 0 0.9 centimeters, 0 0.9 centimeters, In 0 0.9 centimeters for B. Take our protractor and measure our angles. Which my best estimate is 35 degrees on that side. And it's symmetrical. 35 degrees. So when you go to add your vectors here, just remember what you're doing. Again, you can't really do this in the book if you, um, you kind of have to do the math on a piece of paper or a printout. So I'm just going to start by putting head to tail. I'll add to the south vector because that's the easiest one. I'll put a 0 0.9 line in so I've added that vector and then to the head of this one Put a 0 0.9 one in. kind of hard to get the exact measurements on the diagram that's so small. But it looks like the resultant is about 0 0.2 centimeters. So for B, I have 0 0.2 centimeters. Um, mine's a little bit off north. Um, I have north, it's basically north 55 degrees to the east. Um, it really depends on your measurement. Uh, the solution that the book has, which would probably be a little bit more precise, is 7.4 newtons, but their measurement is 0 0.148 and uh, the angle is a little bit more to the north. So again, you gotta look at the diagram and take into the account that you're going to have some precision problems. So we have three vectors here for C. Zero point six, the other one should be zero point six as well. It is. These two vectors for C are equal and opposite. So they really aren't going to factor in. This vector here is going opposite to the other one, and it should be 0 0.6, which it is. So 
these three vectors are the same. And all we have to do then is to take 0 0.6 off the end. Take this vector and add it to the end. And then measure the, dis the difference. And I'm getting... I'm getting a difference of about 0 0.3. Apply the, apply the scale. And the resultant is going to go... Um, the resultant vector is pushing to the right so we can throw in the vector to the east. Um, finally D. Well, honestly D is going to be the easiest of the four because it actually has lengths that are a little bit easier to measure. So this is two centimeters. This looks it's about two centimeters too. It's two point five centimeters. And zero point nine centimeters. So I'm just measuring them all. I'm gonna take my protractor now and measure the angles. It's about fifteen degrees. About 35 degrees, and about 50 degrees. So I'm going to be all over the text from the section I printed, but um, we're just going to pick one and start adding them together. So I'll start down. I'll add this one to the end of here. So anytime you're adding a vector, just make a little origin on the end. I need to go 15 degrees up. And 2.5 centimeters. And your line should look relatively parallel. So I got that one done the end of this vector. I'm just going to put a little origin. And I need 0 0.9 at 35 degrees. And that's that vector. So the resultant vector would be the difference starting at the tail from where you end it to where you start it with the head of the arrow going down this way. I measure it. I'm going to round it to 0 0.5 centimeters. Again, it's the principle is that we're doing here is really just the method. Obviously, with larger diagrams, it's a little bit easier. This person here equals 25 newtons, and the direction that I'm going to get here is pretty much right along that line. Uh, about 33 degrees. So the vector is going south 33 degrees to the west side. 
again, it's the method of adding the vectors that really is important here. Um, I have an answer that's a little bit bigger than what the text expects, but using markers and protractors, it does make life um, a little bit more difficult. But the, again, the principle is exactly the same. Uh, there's definitely a level of uh, relative uncertainty here. So number 17 in your text um, is a question that generally people have problems with. Um, the biggest thing you have to remember to do is to draw a free body diagram. So the question says a student pushes a 25 kilogram lawnmower with a force of 150 newtons. Um, at an angle, which is, this angle is not obviously not to scale of 35 degrees and there it's on the ground and I got the head of my arrow pointing down here. Question A is find the vertical and horizontal components of that vector. So you are looking for the vertical component, component which I'm just going to call Fy and the horizontal component which I'm going to call Fx. You have the angle in here as 35 degrees. So for part A, it says find the vertical and horizontal components of the applied force. So Fx is going to be equal to the cosine of the angle of Fa. Because remember, you have an angle. Here's your opposite side. Here's your adjacent side. And here's your hypotenuse. Of course, your right angle is here. So is the cosine of 35 degrees times 150 newtons, Fx is equal to 122.88 newtons equals 120 newtons um, with significant uh, figures. Fy is the opposite side, so we will use the sine of the angle times Fa the sine of 35 sine of 35 times 150 is 86.03 newtons two significant digits is 86 newtons so 120 newtons in the x 86 in the y There's A. Now question B says, find the normal force. So I'm actually going to do B up here because I want to use the diagram still. So part B says, find the normal force supporting the lawnmower. So normally for us, the normal force acting on the lawnmower would just be equal and opposite to its weight. So we know the normal force is generally equal to weight. However, there's also a vertical component um, of you pushing into the ground. So because the Fy is pushing down, it's acting in the same direction as gravity. So there's two forces pressing into the ground. So the ground has to push up with the negative of Fy. So we're going to add it in. Again, Fy and Fg are both in the same direction. So I'm ignoring any signs because, of course, the normal force is going to press up. So that's the mass times gravity plus 86 newtons. No negative on 
the acceleration just because it's going it's the response force three thirty one point two five newtons so there's B so part C says what is the net force um, working on the lawnmower if the force of friction is 85 newtons. So for question C, just a really simple free body diagram. So Fn, Fg is going to be a little bit less than it. We have um, Fx propelling it. We have the force of friction going down. Um, and Obviously, we have the applied force kind of coming in here, but I'm not really worried about that for this problem. So F net is equal to Fx minus the force of friction. Remember, it's only the horizontal component, so it's only the 120. So 120 newtons take away 85 newtons. It's 37.88 newtons. So 38 newtons would be the net force acting on the um, lawnmower. The last one is the acceleration. So acceleration is equal to net force over mass. It's 37.88 newtons. The mass of the lawnmower is 25 kilograms. Equals 1.52 meters per second squared. Significant digits. And that would be number 17. So again, remember, if you have an angle of a force applied at an angle, resolve it to its components. Um, the biggest real part for what we do is calculating what the horizontal component is because that's actually what's going to be what moves it. And then that ties into um, the net force here. So that's just the horizontal component. So find the net force, find acceleration. So in number 18, it says a 17,000, sorry, 1,700 kilogram car is towing a larger vehicle with a mass of 2,400 kilograms. So we have car one, 1,700 kilograms. We have car two, 2,400 kilograms. And we know that they're being pulled in this direction. So there's two parts to this question. It says find the force to accelerate the connected vehicles um, from 0 to 15 kilometers per hour in 11 seconds. So to find acceleration, it's the change in speed over change in time. We know that it's 15 kilometers per hour, which if we convert that to um, meters per second, we just divide by 3.6. So it's 4.17 meters per second. So 4.17 meters per second is the increase to speed divided by 11 seconds is 0 0.379 meters per second squared. So there's my acceleration. To find the force, it's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Or in this case, it's going to be equal to the mass of both of them added together times the acceleration we just solved. So 
So times 1,700 is 2,400. It's 1,553 newtons. We have two significant digits, 1,600 newtons. So there's the second answer. And find the tension of the rope um, acting between them. So we know that this car is going to accelerate at 0 0.379 meters per second. So to calculate the force, this is, um, let's call this car 1 and car 2. So to find the force of 1 on 2, which is essentially the force that rope needs to provide, is equal to the mass of 2 times the acceleration is 2400 kilograms times 0 0.379 meters per second. So 2400 multiplied by 0.379 is 909.6 newtons. Two significant figures is 910 newtons. So that's really um, the main parts with connected objects. Uh, we can treat it, resolve it more into two uh, point masses and use free body diagrams to uh, logic our way through it. But the product or the, the solution is really the same in every case. So number 19 says, an ice skater pulls three small children, one behind the other, with masses of 25, 31, and 35 kilograms. Assume the ice is smooth enough to can be considered frictionless. So 19a. So an ice skater pulls three children behind. 25 kilograms. 31 kilograms. and uh, 35 kilograms. So the skater is pulling the three kids in that direction. For A, it says find the total force um, for the train if they reach a speed of 3.5 meters per second in 15 seconds. Acceleration is delta V over delta T 3.5 meters per second in 15 seconds. Acceleration is equal to 3.5 divided by 15 is 0 0.233 meters per second squared. The force is going to be equal to the mass total times the acceleration. The force is going to be equal to 25 plus 31 plus 35 kilograms times 0 0.233 meters per second squared. 25 plus 31 plus 35 times 0.233. 21.2 newtons, two significant digits, is 21 newtons. So now we're looking for a slightly different approach for part B. Part B, we still know the acceleration, is we're looking at this tension in here. That's for B. So when you solve this particular question, force is equal to, let's call this mass 1, 2, and 3. Mass 2 plus mass 3 times A.
31 plus 35 kilograms. So you go through and solve that. 31 as we go through 31 plus 35 times 0.233 is 15.4 newtons. Two significant digits is 15 newtons. And that's how we solve number 19. So number 21 uh, says a 64 kilogram person is standing on a scale in an elevator. The elevator is rising at a constant velocity but then begins to slow with an acceleration equals to 0 0.59 meters per second squared. What is the sign of the acceleration and what is the reading on the scale when the elevator is accelerating? So the concept here is um, has been sort of approached already in class. Um, when we are actually looking for the elevator slowing down, the reality is is that you're going to actually feel lighter. So the equation we use is we say weight apparent is equal to your mass times gravity minus your acceleration because the elevator is going upwards and begins to slow down. So that'll be a negative acceleration. So you'll get a little bit lighter in your stomach. 64 kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared. Take away 0 0.59 meters per second squared. Nine point eight one take away point five nine times sixty four is five hundred and ninety newtons. And that's how we do number twenty one. So question number 23, which is our last in this set, um, is basically the same as our previous solution. But I think the biggest thing is just understanding exactly where your vectors are, sort of just to keep elaborating on this concept. So it says a 549 Newton woman, so Fg equals 549 Newtons. Um, is standing on a scale in an elevator that is going down. So this is the the force the elevator is putting up. So it's it, the elevator's motion is down. It begins to slow. And when it's so before um, we can say these are equal if it's stand, if she's in constant motion, but when she starts to slow there's going to be a little bit of an addi additional force applied. So this here is what we call weight apparent. It's the normal force plus the applied force. If you are accelerated upwards, it's going to feel a little bit more, so you're going to feel a little bit heavier. If it's going to be downwards, this little vector will be pointing in the opposite direction like it was in the previous question, and you'll feel a little bit lighter. But we still end up with weight apparent equals mass of G plus A. Weight apparent is equal to, um, well here comes the first little trick on this question, is it's giving us our weight in Newtons. So her mass would be equal to her weight divided by gravity is equal to 549 Newtons divided by 9.81 meters per second squared, 549, 549 
divided by 9.81 is 55.96 kilograms. And the rate she's accelerating So realistically, the reason she'll feel heavier is because she'll experience gravity, and then the extra 9.73 is 589.8 newtons, uh, two significant digits, and there's her weight.